Hey, as we mentioned, every night of the show this week, we're going to be chatting to politicians about the political year ahead. We're kicking off with a Tasmanian former senator who had to leave the Senate late last year after it was revealed her citizenship status was constitutionally dodgy. Now her party, the Jackie Lambie Network, is running 12 candidates in the upcoming Tasmanian state election. Would you please welcome to the first night of Poly Week, Jackie Lambie. Hello. Hey! Welcome, Jackie. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Important stuff out of the way first. There was a rumour last year you were going to be on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. What happened? Well, I'm already a lioness, sweetheart, so I don't really <laughs> don't need to go on there, do I? You don't want to go to the jungle. Well, did you they know. approach you at all? Well, you know, if I go on there, I'm going to kick their ass. So, you know, there's no point. Well, the staff has said Jackie will not make an appearance this year. Which does imply that in future years... No, uh, sweetie, you know what? It's about time they had 40-something. We'll just say 40-something on The Bachelorette. <laughs> the Bachelorette! Oh, I am it! I am it! Bachelorette! Yeah, that worked out well for Sophie Monk, so I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> At least I'll get to first base. It's been many, many years, mate. Anything's good! Fuck it up. We got to that in record time. <laughs> Now, last year, sad times for you. We were actually in Canberra for tonight. We were recording a little piece with the Senate. We were going to talk to you, and then literally the day we were there is when the news sort of came down about your citizenship status, and uh, and you had to step down uh, from the Senate. What what was that like to be fired oh, by I the Constitution? Down because I knew you were coming up, Tom. You know, you scared the <laughs> hell out of me. I have that effect on the political class. Oh, They're terrified of my raw power. Me too, sweetie. Me too. <laughs> but that must have been heartbreaking, right? Yeah, it was pretty heartbreaking. It was more heartbreaking for the staff, you yeah. know, because those staff work really, really hard and. That, you know, basically they lose their jobs as well, and I think that was the hardest thing. Of course, my dad, because um, you know he was born wearing a kilt and apparently no underwear, but we won't go into that. That's way too much detail. Yes. Uh, and uh, so you know, the only thing he does do is play the bagpipe. So um, yes, I was really. It was actually quite heartbreaking. It pretty. It hit us pretty hard. But you do the thing, right? You said, look, I didn't do my paperwork. I'm copping this on the chin. I'm stepping down. Do you think that Section 44 of the Constitution should be changed so that dual, citizenship, dual citizens can serve in our parliament? Yeah, that's why I said I'm an uneducated idiot and that's why I didn't get Section 44. <laughs> and uh, should it be changed, um, I think they're going to have to look at it. You know, it also involves, they're saying 70% of people um, cannot run for parliament because they're teachers, they're in the armed forces or whatever. And I, I think that's really cutting down our gene pool. And let's face it, the gene pool is fucked. Let's be honest. <laughs> Using your fancy politics talk. Sorry about that, Tom. Tell us what Sorry. you really think. I did spend three years up there, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> you would know. So how are you going to do it? How are you going to get... You want to go back to the Senate. You, yeah. you believe you don't want to get run for the House of Reps necessarily. You think you're best served in the Senate. How are you going to do that? Yeah, so I'm just waiting to see how it all folds out in the next few weeks. Um, my second person on my ticket, um, because he's a mayor, may be profiting from the Crown, which is obviously attached to Section 44 as well, so we need to see how that rolls out. And then I need to see what decisions come out of the Nick Xenophon team and how they're fighting um, to make sure that they can return a member back to the NXT right. and that their votes don't go elsewhere. So it's so all the down to the says courts. That your number two can't run, he's like yep. he's, he's out under Section 44. Does no, that... no, then I've got my third. Then you've then um, this is your third. Okay, yeah, you wouldn't ask him. My third is a very to... wonderful man, and no, right. I will not ask him to step down. Okay, um, that would be whatever he wants to do. But I certainly will be very good mates, and uh, if he wants that position, then that's his. Right. And we still don't know whether it's going to be six years or three years. So right. you know, so I'm just getting off my ass and getting on with it. <laughs> but you're what? You're what? You're going to wait for the next election to run for the Senate? Well, um, yeah, I guess unless I get in there and hijack the Senate, you know, illegally. <laughs> I have used those weapons before. I was in the military for 10 years. I had thought about taking one of those in there. Jackie, you, the cannot, you cannot joke about this. You cannot joke about taking your military expertise to hijack the Senate. There's an election in Mate, three it months. it would fix all the issues, I can tell. The only oh one my the last God. man standing. I'm on to it. Lordy. All right, you're running, you're running 12 candidates, apparently at gunpoint in Tasmania. <laughs> And you're doing pretty well. You're polling about 9% uh, in a primary vote in some seats, which is, you know, pretty That's bloody good. That's fake news, mate. We're about 30. I can okay, tell you right, right now. Okay, right. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, Trump. Um, you're polling better with men than women. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, give me that bachelorette and we'll be polling yes, yes, yes. I'll tell well, you. Where have your personal life, politics-wise? Why do you think your political message and your work appeal more to men than women? Oh, because women don't like me. They're bitches. <laughs> All women are bitch. Okay, remember, they're more than 50% of the population. I'm trying yeah, to help they're you. They're growing, they're growing, mate, they're growing. I, I, I'm, I'll tell you what, right. I, I'm holding out there for those men, so keep coming, keep lifting no, okay. my clothes. Focus off your loins. 
Focus on the votes. What? 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 <laughs> Why? You can't call all women bitches, my friend. Mate, we're all bitches. I'm one of the biggest ones. I would know I'm the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee. Queen <laughs> Bitch. All right, great. Well, I'm just really glad we're getting stuck into some policy discussion here. It's good. Best policy bloody discussion we've had last year and the beginning of this year. This is a great way to get it started. This is a good way to go. Okay, now pokies is a massive issue, right? The Labor Party's campaigning very hard on this in Tasmania. Uh, they want to ban uh, pokies from pubs and clubs. The a network as well after a, after the sort of contract is up after 2022 can f- explain for the rest of the country why is pokies such a massive issue in Tasmania it's not a massive issue there's only about 11 10 or 11 percent that um really see it as a massive issue so I say that's 10 or 11 percent I say the contracts run out right. in uh 2022 I know the destruction that they're doing especially me being in those rural and regional areas um, and I can see that what it's doing to families and the breakdowns and the financial impact it's having and the health impact it's having as well from the from actually that financial impact. So I just I don't want to re-sign them on. They can go back to the casinos. It's as simple as that. They do it in Western Australia and they've done it very well. I used to pour a beer once, Tom, you know. That was before I was dancing actually on the bars, but you know, I won't go into that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> There are so many things That's we won't really get and go stuff. into in this interview. But, um, okay, you used to pull a bit, right, and there were lots of there were yeah, little pokies know, there? You know, no, there was no pokies back no, right. then, right, but the bars and that were full because they used to put entertainment on. They'd go and put happy hours on. You'd get your bloody dim sims. It'd drive a lot of people. Those men come in for their dim sims. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> the little saveloys, winners, mate. I'm right in tune with those men, I can tell you. I, yes, okay. And half-price beers. <laughs> half-price beers. And big tips for Jackie Lambie. Big tips. Yeah, yeah. Tips, is it? Tips. 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 <laughs> Tips. Big. That Tips. might help my voting thing, though. That's not a bad idea. Okay, yes, that whole enlargement right. thing going right, on. Okay. Women are bitches. Men like dim sims and big tips. <laughs> Learning a lot ahead of time here. So, uh, so pokies are well. They're at least a big issue in terms of the campaign thus far. They're one of the three issues that you've listed on the Jackie Lambie Network uh, website. That uh, medical marijuana and also the health system as well. What what other issues do you think are going to come up in the Tasmanian state election? That are going to matter to the Tasmanian people? Well, the most the things that matter are the health and the education. You know, our kids. Um, we've got that NAP plan going. We're spending a lot of money down there, and we're just not getting the results out of them. And our health system, well. Um, it's an absolute clusterfuck. There's no other way to put that in Tasmania, and I can't even put that nicely. And it has not got any better. They've spent a lot of money on consultants. Uh, I believe I can fix that very, very quickly, and that's what we want to be able to do. Our number one priority is fixing health. I need to get those waiting lists down. I've got 5,000 people on that waiting list that are waiting. I've got people getting addicted to morphine. You know, so um, it's just not on anymore. I've got a lot of elderly down there and they need to be looked after. And by not looking after them, it's costing us a lot more in the long run. And okay. I don't understand why they don't understand that. It's pretty common, much common sense. The elderly, of course, very important in this society. Also important is the millennials. This is a cool, hip, young show for the young people. Young people <laughs> in the house? <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, most people hate politics and politicians. Uh, young people particularly seem in- unengaged. Union membership is down. Uh, party membership is down. The AEC tells us that there are you know, still many, many young people who aren't even enrolled to vote. So every political guest we have on the show this week, we're going to ask them to give a quick pitch to our resident in-house millennial here at Tonightly. OK, her name is Lauren. She's just turned 18 and she joins us now from a gender studies uni lecture room. Hello, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> That's Millennials for you. Okay, all right, now, Jackie, we're going to give you 30 seconds. Millennials only have a 30-second attention span. Crap, okay. I can't, I can't text that fast, mate. It's no, don't worry text. about texting her. Just talk down the barrel there. Give a pitch. You're talking to Lauren. You're talking to young people and the Millennials out there. Why should they vote for the Jackie Lambie Network? Your time starts now. I'm going to give you half price on your uni fees and I'm going to get you out there and you're going to volunteer and you're going to show all that big heart because I know you, Millennials, if there's one thing you do have... You have that massively big heart. Just and uh, millenniums? Millennials. Millennials. Sorry, millennials. See, you've yep. got me under the pressure. You've got I'm me under the sorry. pump. 15 seconds left. Right. I'm going to show them how to use a tea towel. <laughs> I'm going to get them ready to go. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tidy up. I'm going to show them how to speak without doing this. <laughs> I'm going to get them going. And I'm going to promise you now, you're not going to start at McDonald's tonight and be bossing them by the morning. That's it. It's all over. 30 seconds time's up. All right. <laughs> Let's check back in with the millennial. Lauren, what did you make of that? Whatever. (laughs) Well, Jackie, you really tried. Jackie Lambie, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your time.